Okay, so today I'd like to talk about climate change and human history and the interactions between them in the past. And so, sort of clearly, if you go back far enough, back 50 million years or so, then there's no humans and it's just after the dinosaurs have died out and it's a, a wonderfully warm world where there's crocodiles living in the Arctic. And, and since then, the world cools and it gradually cools and at some point, about 30 million years ago, you get ice sheets on Antarctica and, uh, and then slowly it cools more until you get to something about five million years ago and then you start having things that, that we regard as our ancestors and so you have human, uh, sort of human ancestors and that's, uh, that's in a period called the Pliocene which I like to study sort of uh, five to three million years ago. And the Pliocene was still a warm world, it was a couple of degrees warmer than it is today, uh, but it had carbon dioxide levels of about 400 parts per million, which is what I'm breathing today. And, and so there was this warm world and there, were, and there were our ancestors in it. And then over the course of this sort of long cooling that, you're, that the world's experiencing, you start crossing a threshold about 2.8 million years ago and the world starts going into glacial interglacial cycles is a technical term or ice ages is probably more common but where you start getting really big expanses of ice covering say North America and and parts of uh, Eurasia and these big expanses of ice absorb hundreds of meters of water uh, and so the ocean drops by a hundred meters and 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 but it's there's a sawtooth pattern to this and so it's cold for about 90,000 years and then it suddenly gets warm again for 10,000 years and sort of that pattern goes through. Two million years ago you start seeing changes in the tropical circulation and, and, that, and those changes impact the climate of Africa and quite whether it's that the climate of Africa becomes uh, drier or whether it's that the climate of Africa becomes more variable and the lake levels start changing, we're not really sure. But something in that climate change leads to uh, a sort of development and evolution of, of the, our ancestors into something that we recognise as, as, hum, as homo, so the human uh, family. And, and that and then sort of you get the, the, those ancestors are in Africa for quite some time uh, and then they slowly spread out over the last uh, 100,000 years or so uh, out uh, across Eurasia. Anatomically modern humans coming in and then, and then there's a period of stable climate and so that stable climate sits uh, for about 10,000 years and so what had happened was you have the real depth of the last ice age was about 20,000 years ago and there were the, the, the ice was at its greatest extent and then it starts melting and it starts uh, decaying away and the sea level starts rising and as, that, and as that happens the world's gradually warming up and so the depth of the last ice age you're looking at a world about four degrees colder and the, and the carbon dioxide level was about a hundred parts per million below its sort of background the pre-industrial level, uh, and, and, but then the carbon dioxide level goes, sort of starts rising, the ice sheet starts falling away, and this is all driven by changes in the Earth's orbit. Uh, there's no human influence in it at all, but, the, but you start seeing that, and then, you, and then after about 10,000 years, the majority of the ice is all completely away, and you get left with uh, a very stable climate that persists for about 10,000 years and it changes slightly but it's generally a flat and a nice and stable climate and and within that stable climate of this period it's called the Holocene you start to see real innovations taking off in in human culture and so about 9,000 years ago you you see the first uh, aspects of domestication where you over in the fertile crescent you're getting crops and and then that domestication occurs independently elsewhere so in china about six or seven thousand years ago and then new guinea about four thousand years ago and over in the americas as well somewhere between sort of five six thousand years ago and so you're getting this 
this convergence of human culture into farming and sort of moving from hunter-gatherers into farming. And, and that then pulls through to changes in, in the way that we live. And, and once you have a farming civilization in your sedentary, then it's clearly worth putting more effort into where you live. And you might also be making a surplus, and so you can afford to use that extra food to supply uh, a higher sort of civilization, I suppose. And you see the births of these first civilizations. And interestingly, one of the, the, the very most famous ones, the, uh, the Egyptian civilization, is actually thought to be slightly influenced by the climate getting worse. And so about somewhere between 14,000 years ago and 6,000 years ago, the Earth's orbit was such that there were large bands of rain in northern Africa were moving really quite far north, and you end up with a period that's referred to as the Green Sahara. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the whole thing's covered with grass, but it's certainly a lot greener than it was, than it, or than it is today. And in that Green Sahara, there were sort of, there were peoples living, and about 6,000 years ago, you start getting the first pastoralists, and so that's cattle herders. Uh, and those pastoralists were able to stick around despite the climate getting worse, because the orbit was changing very slowly back, and so it was turning into the dry Sahara, we know. But it didn't turn quite as fast as it perhaps should have, because those, uh, because those cattle herders were able to sort of support the, the climate uh, through moving nutrients around and, and, and helping the vegetation. But at some point, it just becomes even too much for them and they have to retreat from the Sahara. And, and if you're in Northern Africa, in the desert region, what you, where you want to retreat to is you want to retreat to the area that has water available, which is the Nile. And so they collect on, so, so you sort of see a, an inward migration onto the Nile Valley and with that greater population density, there's more requirement for uh, social structure and you start getting into the Egyptian civilization. And so sort of the climate, and, it, and, and it's generally stable, but with these slight worsenings and slight betterings that cause technological innovation. And that technological innovation, in a cultural sense at least, is what's spurring civilization onwards. So you have this technological innovation, and then, and then there are cycles of this. As the climate just naturally gets a little bit warmer or a little bit colder, or maybe it's just the northern hemisphere, but we don't necessarily know. And, and so you have a Roman warm period, and, oh, and, and it was warm whilst the Roman Empire spread over, and there was technological innovation associated with that, and clearly cultural innovation. Not all of it being pleasant, of course, but stuff's moving onwards and then it gets colder going into the the what we call the dark ages here in Europe uh, and then and then as the climate gets warmer again into the medieval period you start seeing this blossoming again of of culture uh, and then the last sort of move in the historical uh, climate is referred to as the little ice age and so this was a period say from about 1450 through to 1850 where it it's noticeably colder and partly that's natural, well predominantly that's natural where you're getting slightly less sunspots and so sunspots alter the amount of energy that reaches the, the Earth's surface and therefore if you have less energy it gets colder. And the other thing that changes the amount of energy reaching the Earth's surface is big volcanoes. You, put, you have a big volcanic eruption, it puts lots of dust up in the atmosphere and that stops the sun's energy coming through. And, and leads to a slightly colder world. And if you have a lot of volcanoes going off in, in general, then that can lead to a cooling. And then in 1492, Columbus and his fleet set off out across the Atlantic and discovered the New World, or the Americas. And, and as he went, he very kindly brought things like Christianity, but also slavery and subjugation and diseases like smallpox. And that really killed the uh, indigenous population. And the indigenous population went from about 60 million people to 
about 6 million people in the course of 100 years. And as they died off, they weren't farming and the trees reclaimed their land. And slowly, as the trees reclaim their land, they're also sucking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And that carbon dioxide, as it sucks out of the atmosphere, leads to a slight cooling. And so you have this natural little ice age where you're where the sun's not shining as much as it could do and there are some volcanoes going off. And these are really small background things, but yet have a big impact on the climate system. And then on top of that, there's this very, what in today's context is a small drawdown of CO2 coming from the reforestation. Uh, and, and that leads to a slight cooling. And then from about the 1850s or so, then you really start seeing the impact of the, uh, the industrialisation and the increase of fossil fuel burning that leads to a much greater level of carbon dioxide reaching the atmosphere and that's leading to the, gl the global warming that we're seeing going through to today and will continue over the course of the next 100 years or so. As we move into the future, at some point humans will stop emitting more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and it will balance out uh, whether of our own free will that's what i hope but it might be just that climate or climate gets so bad that society uh, collapses and the population collapses and so it, it sort of acts as a natural break on the amount of emissions uh, i don't want that to happen but at some level the carbon but at some time the carbon emissions will level off and then it'll take about oh, 100, 200 years for the atmosphere to equilibrate, so to, to reach the level associated with, that atmosphere, with those carbon dioxide emissions, and uh, then another few thousand years for the sea level rise to really uh, finally kick in as the ice sheets are slowly uh, melting away. But, it's some, but, but that, will, that carbon pulse through our industrialization will level off uh, and then over tens of thousands of years, then the natural geological cycles should start uh, coming into play and drawing down that carbon dioxide. And, and whether we then go into an ice age and it draws it down that quickly, and so maybe 100,000 years of perturbation through the human influence on the climate, or whether it's that we've, we've put so much in there that the world has found a new stable state back like the Pliocene, so four or five million years ago, and that level uh, stays, at, and so sort of it stays at that level until there's a very, very gradual drawdown and we have to go through the whole cycle of ice ages again, I'm not sure. But there, is, there was a time when the climate was naturally varying and impacting humans, and now we've crossed into the point where the climate is being driven by humans and at some point on geological timescales we will return to the to a setting where the natural processes in the earth system change the climate again.